In today's video I wanted to talk about this radio here, the XPR6550 or DP3600 and I wanted to compare it to this radio here, the DP4800 or XPR7550. Now there has been renewed interest in this radio here recently because this is one of the generation 1 motor turbo radios so this was one of the first motor turbo radios and Motorola have now stopped producing this radio and they've stopped support for it so you can't get firmware updates for it anymore so the dealers have been trying to get rid of this radio so they've been selling them off for pretty cheap prices so I think quite a few people have seen this radio being sold for cheap and thought maybe I should get one of them so in this video I'm gonna just be showing you the differences between the generation 1 and the generation 2 motor turbo radios. So there are some very obvious differences just from looking at the radio you can see that this one only has a very small screen and you can see that it's also only in monochrome and you can see that this one has a color screen. You can also see that the speaker on this one is at the bottom but on this one they've put it at the top instead and also the microphone is at the bottom on this one whereas on this one the microphone is up here and I actually think it's better to have the microphone up here because I think that generally people will talk more towards this area of the radio than they would do towards this area of the radio especially when the screen is up here another notable difference between these two radios is the channel selector on this one it goes from 1 to 16 and it stops at the end on this one it doesn't have any numbers on it and it just goes around and around so that's that would be the end position on this radio but I can continue to turn it around back to the beginning and so on so it goes all the way around like that and what that does is it allows you to put more than 16 channels in one zone which can be useful for some applications they've also moved around some of the buttons on the keypad so they've moved P1 and P2 which are their programmable buttons from down here on the generation 1 radios to up here on the generation 2 radios this makes them easier to access and easier to remember because well you don't have to remember them it shows on the screen what those buttons are assigned to. On this radio you you just have to remember what they're assigned to. Then if we look at the left side of the radio you can see there is some difference although the difference is not huge. The top button on this one is coloured, on this one it's not. The push to talk button on this one is circular and it sort of sticks out from the radio which actually meant that in operation this radio had quite a lot of accidental transmissions. This one however the push to talk button is indented into the radio as you can see there which means that accidental transmissions are a lot less common with this radio. On the right hand side you can see that the programming connector is very similar on both of these radios. What you might notice is at the top here the generation 1 radio has this circular connect a bit and the generation 2 radio is missing that and this bit was actually used to connect to the antenna and you could get speaker mics where the antenna would be on the speaker mic so your antenna would be if you're wearing the speaker mic on your shoulder your antenna would be further up and would usually get better signal now they've removed that from the generation 2 radios which is a shame for some people who might want to use those speaker mics but for most people who don't use those speaker mics it doesn't really make a difference and I think it was probably a cost saving measure for Motorola. A second thing that they've changed between these two radios which was a negative change from the generation 1 to the generation 2 was that in the generation 1 radios they used a standardized connector which was an SMA connector. So if you look in there hopefully you can see that that is an SMA connector meaning that you can screw on an adapter 
and easily use it with other antennas such as an antenna mounted on the roof of your car. I've got an adapter here which is SMA to BNC and that just screws right in there and now I could easily attach this to an antenna mounted on the roof of a car or maybe even a rooftop antenna on the top of a building. On the generation 2 radios they used a proprietary antenna connector like this which meant that you couldn't just buy your own antennas or buy your own adapters and connect them to the radio so you couldn't actually use this radio with an external antenna one major change from the generation 1 to the generation 2 radios that I haven't mentioned so far is the audio and I tried to demonstrate this in one of my earlier videos I'll put a link to that in the description if you want to have a look at it but I'm actually going to try to demonstrate it better in this video because I'm not sure how well that previous video showed it okay so I've muted the generation 2 radio and I've turned up the volume on the generation 1 radio now and I'm going to go into another room and I'm first going to speak relatively far away from the microphone or a reasonable distance away and then I'm going to speak very close to the microphone and you should hear a massive difference in the audio And now I'm going to do the same thing with the Generation 2 radio. This is the test speaking a reasonable distance away from the microphone. And this is a test speaking very close to the microphone. So hopefully you could see the difference there. And you could see that this one doesn't really sound great when you speak too close to the microphone. And it doesn't really level out changes in volume between users or between even the same person talking however this one does level it out a lot more and although the audio when I was speaking very close to the microphone didn't sound great on either of them it sounded a lot less harsh to listen to on the generation 2 radios and that is the major improvement between these two radios the volume leveling and just the general audio quality so ultimately the question that I wanted to answer with this video was is it worth buying this radio and the answer is it depends on your circumstances if you need a rugged radio and you can get it for very cheap then I'd say go for it but if you don't need a rugged radio then there are probably other DMR radios out there that will better suit your needs. So thanks for watching, make sure you click the thumbs up button if you enjoyed this video and if you're not a subscriber already then if you want to see more videos like this make sure you subscribe.